Hey everyone, it's Big Smoons with a Platinum Review, where I talk about the games that I have the Platinum Trophy or 100% on and what it took to get there. I also review the games based on the amount of fun I had. Today, we'll be taking a look at Kingdom Hearts. I remember being a kid and watching the Disney Channel and seeing video segments for Kingdom Hearts. By that point, I'd already played some Final Fantasy games and grown up watching Disney films. This was the perfect combination for me. And in 2002, my mom got me the original game for the PlayStation 2. I completed the game back then and loved the story. In 2017, the remastered versions of several of the games in the Kingdom Hearts series were released for the PlayStation 4. The version I'm playing today is called Kingdom Hearts Final Mix. I picked it up and started grabbing trophies. I just recently returned from a trip to Disney World and it encouraged me to boot up Kingdom Hearts again. Let's get started. Kingdom Hearts is an action role-playing game developed by Square Enix, the team behind the Final Fantasy series. This game takes you through several Disney worlds and asks you to stop the threat of darkness destroying them. Young kid, check. Saving the world from darkness, check. Cheesy lines, check. This is definitely a Japanese role-playing game. The story of Kingdom Hearts is straightforward enough said to no one ever since the release of the sequels. However, the original game is not difficult to follow. The opening cutscene for this game shows some trippy imagery over the melodic song of Simple and Clean by Utada Hikaru. I apologize if I've butchered that pronunciation. As the song fades out, you find yourself over the stained glass windows of several famous Disney stories. You have some choices to make here that affect what skills you get and how you level up. You might spend some time over these options and find yourself struggling with this one in particular. But after the short tutorial area, the game begins. You start off on Destiny Island, where you take the role of Sora. He's playing on the island with his friends Riku and Kairi. The other characters on the island are Titus and Waka from Final Fantasy X and Selfie from Final Fantasy VIII. Zora, Riku, and Kairi are building a raft and gathering provisions to leave the island and head to different worlds. One night, darkness falls over the island, and the three are separated. A weapon reveals itself to Zora, and he's able to use it to defeat the little shadow monsters that have appeared. You'll later learn that these are called the Heartless, and your weapon is called a Keyblade. You'll fight a large Heartless and fall into the darkness. You wake up in Traverse Town, which is where everyone whose world was destroyed ends up. This doesn't bode well for Destiny Island, but Sora has much more on his mind right now. Specifically, he wants to reunite with Riku and Kairi. But first, we find out that the Disney main cast has a mission too. Mickey Mouse has gone missing, and left a note with Pluto, stating that he has to help save the worlds. He asks Goofy and Donald to find the Keyblade Wielder, and then find him. They say their goodbyes to Minnie Mouse and Daisy Duck and go meet up with Chip and Dale to begin their search. If you followed this along and it doesn't sound like a wild Disney fever dream, then good, there's a lot more to come. Zora will run into some more Final Fantasy characters in Leon from 8 and Yuffie, Sid, and Aerith from Final Fantasy 7. He meets up with Donald and Goofy and leaves Traverse Town. I won't dive too much more into the story past this, but you hop on a gummy ship and start exploring your way through several different Disney-based worlds. My favorite here is Halloween Town. I love the Nightmare Before Christmas, and I love the redesign of the characters. My least favorite world is Atlantica. I like the Little Mermaid well enough, but swimming through this world is tedious. So you know the objective here, like most JRPGs, is to save the world. You'll unlock new equipment and new skills as you progress through the worlds and level up. The game mostly consists of pressing attack and killing things in your path. There is magic and summons to assist you and items to help you out. There is a lot of Disney thrown into a Final Fantasy JRPG style of game. The item names are the same as the Final Fantasy series. The magic and the leveled up forms are the same. The summons are all Disney characters and you can team up with characters in some of the worlds, such as Tarzan and Jack Skellington. The main villains here are the Heartless and the Boss Heartless. These guys are fairly forgettable and are lost among the great boss fights of the Disney villains, such as Jafar and Captain Hook. These guys are being headed up by Maleficent, 
and have secret shadow council meetings. It's awesome seeing the baddies from old Disney films gathering together to take over. The real villain reveals himself late in the game, and I'll not be revealing him here to avoid spoilers. I give Kingdom Hearts an 8 out of 10 for fun factor. The opening cutscene is spectacular with the visuals and the music. The game drags for me a bit in the middle, and the combat can quickly become repetitive. The story presented in the first game is great, but I find the gameplay lacking. The gameplay is a lot faster paced than the sequels and the spin-offs, even if the story really runs off the rails. Let's talk trophies. There are 56 trophies required to complete the game 100%. It is a slog to get them all as well. All of the trophies can be completed in one playthrough if you're a master at the game and an absolute masochist. To do that, you would have to complete the game on proud mode, the hardest difficulty. You would also have to speed run the game in less than 15 hours, never change your starting equipment, and never use a continue. No thank you. I recommend two playthroughs. If you've never played this game before, then boot it up on proud mode and make your goal completing the game by any means necessary. It will be difficult, but you can grind out levels and set your skills up to help immensely. Keep enough items and mana on you to heal. After beating the game on the hardest difficulty, the rest of the trophies are significantly easier because you will be achieving all of them on beginner difficulty. Skip cutscenes and don't change your starting equipment. If you die, Make sure to click load game instead of continue. Beginner mode gives you pre-equipped items and several stat boosting items to help you run through the game. Once you obtain the speedrunning trophy, it's time to collect and complete everything and grind out to level 100. This is where the grind comes in. Getting to level 100 can be tedious, but there's a lot of things to do to clean up trophies before you get there. You'll have to complete all the worlds for starters. This includes the optional world of the 100 acre wood. In order to complete this world, you have to find all the torn pages. You have to fight every enemy at least once. This includes the several secret bosses and enemies. Since you are doing this on beginner, you should be able to overcome these bosses, especially once you reach level 100. Complete all the mini games to include the Colosseum Cups, collect all 99 Dalmatians, and activate all the Trinity Marks. Collecting all the weapons for all the characters is a grind as well, because it requires you to craft the weapons by collecting items from enemies across the game. Some trophies will come naturally while trying to obtain everything else, such as holding 10,000 money at once, opening 100 chests, and killing 2,000 enemies. You may also kill 2,500 enemies in your gummy ship as you attempt to collect all the blueprints and complete gummy ship missions. The great thing about getting to 100% in this game is that all of your progress is recorded by Jiminy Cricket in his journal. This thing is paramount in tracking everything that you have found. I highly recommend you follow a collectible guide regardless. Due to the multiple playthroughs, the collectible grind, the synthesis grind, and the difficulty of proud mode, I do not recommend you get this platinum trophy. I can play through this game multiple times and have a blast, but I love Disney and Final Fantasy games. Scouring the levels for collectibles is decent enough, but synthesizing all the items necessary is a slog. Proud mode is an absolute monster at times during some of the boss battles. Thanks for watching everyone. I hope everyone who watches has been enjoying the videos posted. Let me know how to improve the videos and make your time spent with me more enjoyable. I spend a lot of time trying to figure out how to make these videos better. I love getting to talk about the games I've gotten the platinum trophies for, and I hope you enjoy listening to me ramble on. I'd like to end today's video by saying that I want you all to believe in magic again. That's nonsense. Have you any proof? As we age, people tend to forget the joy and wonderment of believing in magic. Growing old doesn't mean hey, that you have hey, to grow up. Out. People spend their lives hoping for a magical answer to their problems and then refuse to believe in the magic in the world. Be the positivity you want to see, and hopefully some of you will rub off on those around you. Thank you.